virtual summits are the most powerful online marketing tool available to grow your list, launch your platform, make more money, and create an impact in the world, even if you're just getting started. If you are ready to take your summit to the next level, then tune into the Virtual Summit Podcast with Dr. Mark T. Wade. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark T. Wade, founder of Virtual Summit Software and creator of the One Day Summit Formula. And I'm on a mission to help you, the summit host, get your summit out to the world in a powerful and impactful way. So let's get started. Hey, Summit O's, Dr. Mark T. Wade here, founder of Virtual Summit Software and your host here on the Virtual Summit Podcast. Super excited for today's episode. We are going to have some fun. I feel like I've just met my soul sister, kindred (laughs) spirit, epic rock star, Meg Casebolt. How are you doing today, Meg? I'm doing well. I feel like now I need to talk a little faster because you're so hyped up. Oh, I am hyped. I'm excited for this episode. (laughs) We are going to have, we've got so much to cover and so much great great, great information that we've just been chatting about in our pre-interview chat. And I'm super excited to get into it. I mean, we're going to be covering some stuff that I think is extremely important um, for speakers, for all you summit speakers out there. This one's going to be for you as well, but also for our summit hosts. uh, You're leaving a lot of great resources on the table. We're going to be covering that in today's episode. Now, before we jump into all those goodies, Meg, I would love for you to let our summit hosts know just a little bit more about yourself. Sure. My name is Meg Casebolt. I am a, an SEO specialist. So I specifically talk about how businesses can get found in Google search results, whether that's Google Maps, you know, organic search results, Google Ads. That's all that I talk about is Google. Um, and a little bit of YouTube too. You know, I think people forget that YouTube is a search engine just as much as Google is and Google owns YouTube. So I, I dabble in that, but it's more about getting showing up in the YouTube search results than it is how to create the content. I'm not I'm not an editor. (laughs) I'm not a video producer. I'm just there to get those keywords into the right places and get those really juicy, good, relevant keywords. Uh, I pretty much work mostly with service-based businesses, um, whether those are local service businesses like photographers or interior designers or yoga studios or places where people need to be in a certain geographic area. I help them show up in Google Maps and search results. Um, I also work with online businesses. So copywriters, social media managers, um, and then also course creators. So those are kind of the three groups of people that I work with are service-based businesses, local and online, and then also course creators. Those are my, my bread and butter folks. I think we have a few of those in our <laughs> I bet here, you probably. do. No, they never go to no, summit. They no, never, no. you know, they, they aren't always trying to improve their knowledge. on Exactly. Things. No. <laughs> and I've actually just made a note here. I'm, I'm going to save time because I want to come back and I'm just going to let foreshadow this for you. I'm I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pick your brain on how we can use Google to help improve our summits or vice versa, how totally. we can help with that. Because I think, um, I know I'm definitely leaving uh, opportunity on the table in that side of things. But now, before we jump into that, now my mind's everywhere because there's so much opportunity here. I want to go into this and this and this. But we're going to start off with first, you are a serial summit speaker. I am. Not just a summit speaker, a serial summit speaker. Um, I would love for you to kind of just give us a, a quick overview of some of the summits that you've spoken on and maybe just like the reason you enjoy speaking on summits. Sure. So I have participated as a speaker on seven summits this year um, in 2019. So I know that you're going to be doing this podcast for at least five more years. So we'll sp- specify 2019 is the time, the time period that we're talking about. Um, Those have mostly been summits that are trying to reach an audience of um, women entrepreneurs. That's most of the audience that I work with. Um, So um, the Boss Project, which used to be Think Creative Collective, puts on summits twice a year. I was involved in their product powerhouse summit. Uh, The Rebel Boss Lady Summit, the Infopreneur Summit, which reaches not just not just the women focus, but anybody who is creating courses or um, you know producing some sort of info product, um, one that's just for service-based businesses. And then the one that has the most interesting name of all the summits that I've done is the seven figures from your toilet seat summit. (laughs) I love that actually. Um, I, (laughs) 
you, you, uh, it's very rarely that I am speechless, but that one had me a little tongue tied right there. <laughs> so I that know. one, that one was a little bit of satire in addition to um, a marketing education summit. The the satirical part is that so many of the we'll just call them bro marketers are like they've got their swimming pools and their Lamborghinis and they're standing in front of them being like. I make five figures from the beach, yo, you know? <laughs> and so we kind of like had, a, this is a, a friend of mine, two, two friends of mine who run this. So they, they were a little bit, you know, parody of this situation. And they're saying, well, if you can make six figures from the beach, why not make seven figures from your toilet seat? But then they said, what are some ethical, appropriate ways that you can sustainably grow your business? And they had 24 different people talking about that. So it was a little funny, a little tongue in cheek, but also gave you some really um, tangible ways to market your business that don't feel quite as slimy as some of the Facebook ads with Lambos would have us feel. <laughs> We've done the unthinkable. We've convinced 35 of the most successful summit hosts, coaches, and consultants to give you their prized possession. Their summit email copy. Get more information at summitscripts.com. Please, please, please tell me they did all of the interviews in the bathroom. That would have been <laughs> legit right there. No, but there <laughs> is one speaker who wrapped herself in toilet paper. <laughs> that, like, if you're listening to this, seven figures from your toilet speak, uh, seat speakers or hosts, please do the next series from the toilet seat. That would be awesome. <laughs> and I love this. We actually, um, we talk in our tribe, in our groups, we, we uh, have a concept. We call it some story concept. And you put a story into the summit. So it's not just the repetitive, boring interviews, uh, the copy and like cloned interviews, but actually create a story. And with that, we can create a theme. And so I actually love that because, you know, even now we're having a longer, we're talking about that because of how it stood out, the theme of that, the satire of that. So I think that's an excellent, I love that point. All of you summit hosts listening here, don't just do a boring summit name, get creative, do something. It doesn't have to be from the toilet seat, but do something creative. I love that, Meg. Which one was your favorite out of all the ones you've spoken on this year? I think that one, just because it was so, so playful, you know, and it's okay to be playful. We don't all have to be these corporate robots. Like people can let their brands show through. You can be a little bit fun and playful. You can, you can poke fun at things and not need to just be, you know, sharing information all the time, but you can make it enjoyable for people to, to watch the summit with you and have some fun with you. Yeah, I think I, I, at this point, people are like, Mark, maybe not so playful. Like you, you <laughs> step it up a little bit, Mark. No, I And love I think playful. that's your brand. That's the brand of your summit, you know? And depending on who your audience is, and this is part of what you kind of hinted at a little bit, is if you want to be found in Google, you have to be really clear about who are you serving and what are you talking about. So for something like the Infopreneur Summit, that's pretty obvious. These are people who are selling digital info products. And you can make it super clear, this is how we're going to support you because we're not talking about service businesses or physical products or software sales or anything like that. We're just talking to people who have this specific um, problem that they're facing. And that's how you're going to end up showing up in those Google search results results is being super, super clear about what are the problems that the people in your audience are facing? What are the solutions that you can help them get to? What are the results that they can get if they listen to these resources that you're sharing with them? So good. I mean, that's so good. And we're going to come, we're going to keep diving into that here in a second. Um, what I'd like to know again is like what, like, so you've spoken on so many summits this year. Why, like, why, like, is this a, is this one of your, topics like are i mean one of your strategies like are you are you like okay some like uh, as far as your outreach and your business is concerned are summits a part of your business strategy and if so why at first they weren't uh my first summit request came because a friend of mine was the marketing director who is running the summit um, so it was very much that relationship driven, collaborative, you know, the team running the summit was throwing around ideas and she threw my hat in the ring um, or my name in the hat and the, uh, whatever the metaphor is. Um, and so that first one kind of landed in my lap. It was knowing the right person. And then after that, it became, oh, Meg does this now. And the feedback from that first one led into future ones. And then the, the speakers from that initial summit started introducing me 
into new summits or saying, Hey, have you heard about this? Or, you know, when somebody started the summit, they'd say, Oh, we're looking for somebody who can talk about this topic. And they would, they would throw my hat in the ring, whatever the phrase is still. Um, so just being known as somebody who is willing to participate in the summit and then getting to know the other speakers in the summit and kind of traveling in a pack together. Not that we are trying to be exclusive, but knowing that we're all willing to do the work to, to submit the videos, to put our best faces forward. Um, we're able to support each other in that way and also share our messages and also promote the summits. It's, it is a marketing tactic at this point. The first one came kind of out of the blue, but once I got into the world of being a summit speaker, um, it became a, a workflow that my operations team can help me systematize where it's like, okay, we're putting it on the calendar. This is how we're promoting it on social. These are the things that they need. Here are the deadlines. Here's what I need to record between now and then. And just kind of making it part of our launch strategy for the year. Not just what are the things that I'm launching? How am I launching my course? But also when am I promoting other people's summits and other people's events as part of our overall marketing strategy? Yeah. And I love that when it's one off, it's kind of like, okay, it's, it is a challenge, but you know, for hosts, but also for speakers, there's work involved and we'll get into some of that. But I love the fact that, you know, if you're doing more of them, it does, it's not exponentially more work. You now have, if you, if you processize it, you know, processize, not process. We'll go, we'll go, we'll go systematize. I know systematize. that's the right, <laughs> we'll, go <laughs> the right that one. <laughs> we'll go systematize it. Then it becomes actually easier, but the, the, the results are exponentially more. So it's not like the work scales. There's a little bit more, but then the results go. And I don't know if it was just me or not, but like the whole time I kept thinking of you and all of these friends running around like at a WWF ring <laughs> because of the names. And then now you've got a band of people in the rings. Okay. So we're going to get back on track here. So huh. I love this. And, and the fact that you've done seven this year, that that's even great. And I like how you've just, you know, said like, you got like this band of brothers or sisters, or, you know, you're, you're all helping each other. And I, I would recommend that all of you summit hosts and speakers that are listening here, get a four man wolf pack or whatever, get three or four or five of you that say, Hey, look, I, and I have this, I have this for my podcasts. As far as like, when I get invited to speak on a podcast, Every podcast host says, hey, do you know anybody else who would be a good guest? I have three people every time that I recommend. Those three people every time recommend me. And so it, it expands. I love that you brought this up, Meg. That was um, a great point. And as a speaker or as a podcast guest, I don't wait for people to ask me. I proactively say to those, you know, if I'm in, when I get that outreach email or when we get on a kind of an introductory call, I'll say, Hey, do you have any gaps that you need to fill? Are there any spaces that you're like, Oh, we already have social media taken care of, but we really want to talk more about copywriting or we want to talk about systems, you know, and they have an idea. Every summit uh, organizer that I've spoken to has an idea of these are the types of topics we're looking for, but maybe we don't have the right people in there. So I will raise my hand and say, who do you need? I will open my Rolodex for you. Well, because, let's like, let's kind of take a step yeah. back for this because this like, so this is one of the, that this aspect where summit speakers are leaving the resources on the table mm -hmm. right here. This is that aspect. So let's like, why don't you walk us through this process? Cause this is kind of your, you know, strategy or process that you use to one, over deliver, but also increase results both for you and other people. So like walk us through the one, why you do this and then how you do it and when you do it. Sure. So I feel like when sometimes when people are running summits for the first time, they reach out to people that they already know and trust. And that is a totally reasonable, logical, smart move to make for the first time you run a summit. You want the people that you know will show up. Um, but then when you're running it for the second, third, maybe fourth, fifth, 10th time, you don't want to keep bringing back those same people. You want to bring in some fresh blood, not only because those people can reach new audiences with theirs, but so that way you're promoting a different group and the people who have already been to your summit and they know how good it is are saying, Oh, I've never heard from this person before, or, Oh, I didn't know that much about this topic. I want to know more about it. And so if you as a summit host can bring new resources and topics to the table, that helps you promote it better, but you may not know the right people in those spaces. And I have been in business for six years. I am constantly getting on coffee chats with new people and I'm like, okay, let me, oh, you know, I like 
Mark, literally right before we were on a call, I was talking to a Pinterest specialist. It wasn't a pitch. It wasn't anything. It was just a coffee talk. And so the next time somebody approaches me about a summit for some sort of digital marketing, I'll say, hey, let me introduce you to this Pinterest specialist if this is something that would be relevant for you. You know, and just kind of keeping those people in the back of your mind. Um, and that's how I've gotten involved in other summits as I've thrown out other people's names. And then the next time they get an opportunity, they put in my name and it very much becomes this collaborative rising tide raises all ships situation where it doesn't, you know, it's not competitive. It's not like I'm saying, and you know, even, even if there was somebody doing an SEO summit, I would say, Hey, do you know, Megan and Melissa and Danielle? And you know, like I would try to get some women in the SEO summit because it's not very common for us to have too many women in the group. Like I want people to know about this. I want people to know my friends. I want them to grow their businesses. I want the summits to be successful. So the more people that you can bring in that, you know, will show up and promote and give really great educational content, like that makes you look better to the hosts. It makes people more likely to buy the VIP upgrades, which is on. Hopefully, you know, if your audience is buying it, then you get that affiliate income. Every person benefits. The other people that you're recommending benefit, the summit attendees benefit, the summit hosts benefit. You know, the more that you can give your personal resources and recommendations to make a summit successful, that isn't making you any less successful. It's just making the summit look better and bigger and more professional. And you get to ride that, you get to grab the coattails and ride along as you help that summit be more successful. Be sure to check out the speaker management tool inside your virtual summit software, which lets you quickly and easily recruit and manage your speakers on your virtual summit literally eliminating hundreds of hours of work. Get more information at virtualsummits.com. Yeah, and I love that. Like that, the fact that of what you're saying and being like, they're, and they're going to remember that too. Like not only is it going to be more successful, which like why would you want to speak on a summit that's not successful? Of course, you want it to be more successful, but they're going to remember you helping. And this is where I really feel like most speakers, summit speakers are leaving resources on the table. When I mean, when I say resources, like we talk a lot over at viral summits about uh, relationships and one of the most powerful relationships. And you and I were talking about in our pre-interview chat, the, the untangible return on investments, like the things you cannot measure that you get out of a summit. And one of those is the relationships. And so when a speaker can provide these kind of over and above aspects that host is going to remember that. And they're going to remember that a lot. Cause I mean, most speakers are like, here's my stuff. Peace. I'm out. Maybe I'll promote, maybe it won't. So, and we'll get into that in a minute too, but I like how you're talking also not just referring speakers, right? You say you reach out to the host and you ask them, if they need other resources. Can you kind of talk us through like that specifically? Like say it's a new summit host and like, what, what would you be asking them? Let's say you're not referring speakers, but help for their summit. I think for the most part, I do refer speakers. Other resources, it can be hard to say. You know, sometimes I'll say, do you need something for a giveaway? Do you need something for uh, the bundle? But for the most part, those requests come with the summit request. And I have very specific things that I do. You know, if, if they come to me and they said, you want to be a speaker? I know that I'm giving away my my workbook as a, an, you know, I, I know what my uh, lead magnet will be. I know what my upgrade will be. I know what my giveaway will be. Like I kind of have that packaged and ready to go. And that's what we were already talking about is you have your process, you know what you're willing to give and you're not going to give, you know, every person who upgrades to the VIP bundle is not going to get an hour of your time because that would be a whole month. Hopefully if the summit's successful, you want the summit to be successful. So you need to come up with things that are reasonable um, to, to give away that won't, <laughs> won't eat too much in to your commitments. Um, but I think in terms of those resources, I think it really is introductions. And also, you know, if you need somebody to help on your team with it, that knows what to do, sometimes I can even make those introductions as I have many friends who have run summits and they have specific virtual assistants who help with it. So maybe that's something that you might want to outsource in the future. And, and there are people who specialize in running summits for a reason. Because they know how to run summits? Yes. Okay, cool. Just making You're sure. You're hoping, that's why. <laughs> like, no, so um, I love this. Now, summit hosts listening into this and speakers, 
take advantage of this. At one, some hosts ask your speakers. They know people, okay? It's better to get a warm intro anyways. And speakers, quit leaving resources on the table. Ask the summit hosts if you if they need help and what they need help with, you'll be remembered for that. So, And I, I think you're totally right about the warm leads too, because if somebody just pitches me, hey, will you join the summit? I'm a little more hesitant. But if somebody says, hey, Andrea says that I should reach out to you and, and ask you to be part of the summit, I'm in. You know, it's, it's who is doing the introduction, who is saying, I'm already on board, let's bring along my posse of people. I think that makes a huge difference in getting those warmer leads to say yes. Now it's a band of cow, cowboys and cowgirls. Okay, I got it. It's a posse. So let's move, let's move into like the next aspect, um, which you've talked about, you've kind of created a process as well on, you know, how you benefit, how you maximize your results even after or like while you're speaking on the summit, not so much from the host side or the speaker side, but like now what do you do with the results that are coming in or the, the audience and attention that you're now getting from these summits? Like talk us through that process. Totally. So, um, you know, I have a full process that I go through when I get that. Well, actually my, my operations director takes care of most of this for me, which is why I'm telling you about how things are systematized because she does it. <laughs> I'm not the best systematizer, but she is. That's her goal in life is to keep my, my ship running smoothly. Um, so when I get that request, I say, yes, I send it along to her. She puts all of everything on the calendar. This is when the summit is, this is when the, you know, information is due. And this is, you know, when the promotion period opens, here's the email we need to send. Here's the swipe copy they shared. Here's what we usually put in there, you know, and just kind of making sure that everything is organized on my side of things. So that way, when I do need to hop on a Facebook Live, I know what I'm talking about that week, right? And then on the back end of things, once people start to sign up for the summit or watch the summit presentations, we have a way of customizing that relationship with them. So it's not just, hey, go to my website and download this freebie. It's like, go to this landing page on my website where I say, welcome from this summit. I'm so glad that you were able to watch the presentation. You know, I know that as a digital product creator, it can be really difficult to find resources that are relevant to you. And here's how digital product creators can get found on Google. And really being specific about who is the audience that we're serving, what's the, the goal of the summit, and putting that into my copy so that they know they're in the right place and so that they know that I care about them. Even if it's just a landing page and you know you duplicate the landing page and you change it out for those people, but it does make them feel important and like you care about them and you're not just like shoving them into the funnel and just like a herd of cows going through a gate, right? But like you're, you're welcoming them instead of shoving them quite so much. And then the same thing with, you know, the follow-up email sequence. They watch the summit, they go to the landing page, they get my free guide, and then I duplicate the sequence and convert kit, or my team does, <laughs> and rewrite those first introductory paragraphs and say, thank you so much for joining us from that summit. We're so glad to have more digital product creators in our audience. If you have any specific questions about how your you know, your business can sell more digital products by getting people from Google, shoot back a reply to this email and let's have a conversation about it. You know, and really it doesn't take that long to customize those sequences. We are still setting out the same seven emails, <laughs> but the words in them are slightly different. And we're tagging those audiences so that maybe the next time, you know, I've, I've done a couple summits about digital product sales. Okay. The next time that I'm doing a summit about digital product sales, I'll make sure that those people see, maybe I'll send them one or two more emails about the new digital product summit that I am going to be a part of and um, making sure that they're more likely to see it than some of the folks in my audience who aren't selling digital products because I've been able to tag them because I've been able to monitor whether or not they're buying from me and making those um, introductions reasonable. As somebody who came from Summit A, I want to tell you that I'm in Summit B and this would be really great for you because I know that you have these problems, right? And anytime that you can segment your audience, that's going to lead to more trust and now I'm telling them about a new summit with my affiliate link in it and they know that it's for them. So they're more likely to, if they buy, then I'm going to get those affiliate sales too. So it makes it worth my time to be tracking who's coming from where and be a little bit more welcoming and personal to them in those interactions. Not just saying, well, here's the generic, you know, you go to my homepage and you go through the same sequence as everyone else. 
I mean, that's ninja right there. And <laughs> that would be so powerful. So, um, and, and, we, and we do a lot of that as well. I would, I would recommend, it's not easy to set up the first time, but if you take the time to do it though, it becomes so much more powerful, so much more, uh, it gives you so many, so much more benefit as you were just saying there, Meg. So I love that. Um, I want to actually jump into, I think now the Google and SEO and how Summit hosts could be improving that or using that even. I mean, I know most Summit hosts, we focus on using the promotions from the speakers as primary source. Secondary, we use Facebook ads primarily, but we're leaving a lot of stuff on the table. And I'm going to give you two things here. One, let's look at it from the aspect of, of for the first time a Summit happens, like so when the Summit goes live. Two, like over at Virtual Summit Software, we have this feature called the Ever Summit feature. So with one click of a button, it'll rerun the summit as if it was live. So the first time we run the summit, how can we be improving our, our opportunities with, with Google and SEO? And if we set it to an ongoing summit, like how can we really maximize that? Okay, you're going to be surprised by this advice. The first time you run the summit, do not worry about your SEO. Get the summit up and running, lean on things that work that are time sensitive because SEO can take a really long time to kick in. And depending on how competitive the industry and marketplace are that you're working in and how specialized the topic is that you're talking about, it could take a long time for you to see those Google results start to seep in, right? So the first thing first, like get the summit to be profitable in the way that you have learned how to make the summit profitable. So that's leaning on your speakers to promote, leaning on your own network, running the Facebook ads that can be more time sensitive and getting in front of your audience and making sales. Then when you start to run the summit for the second and third time and you have some downtime between those uh, summit launches, whether they're evergreen or not, once you have that kind of process and you have the, the the package of what you're going to do and you have a bit more time, then maybe you can start refining the copy on your sales page to say, this is a summit for coaches. And you can say not just, you know, there's that I, I've, people have sent me this meme where it's like an SEO specialist walks into a bar, comma, tavern, comma, pub, comma, you know, like all the, all the different ways that you can say walks into a bar. Like that's what SEO people do a lot. So maybe the first time that you run the summit, you're saying this is a virtual summit for coaches. And then the second time you want to say, this is a virtual summit for career coaches, life coaches, and business coaches. And that way, when people are looking for career coaches, it shows up for them. Or you create a blog post all about how your summit can just help career coaches and not worry about the life coaches and the business coaches and the health coaches in that space and create specialized blog content for either a specific audience that you're targeting or a specific problem that you're solving for them. So may, or maybe both, maybe you want to, you know, highlight one of the uh, speakers there and say, this presentation that's in our summit can help career coaches get their legal paperwork taken care of. And you can write a whole blog post about, or maybe have your, oh, I like this idea, have your summit speakers write guest posts for you. And say, I'm, you know, a, a lawyer who does intellectual property and here's how coaches can benefit from it. And then that information shows up on your summit page. And if people are looking for information about intellectual property for, uh, for career coaches, now I'm just sort of making up this example as I go along. If those people are looking for that information, they can both find your speaker and be able to go to your speaker's website, but also they can say, oh my gosh, I didn't know that there was this whole summit just for the admin administrative side of career coaching, right? So if you can get those people to your website, you continue to promote your speakers. You get some backlinks from a variety of places if your speakers are saying, hey, look, I just wrote this guest post over on the Summit blog. And then you're getting new people coming into your site. And if you have your Facebook ads set up right, once people get to your site, even if they just go to the blog post and don't look at the virtual summit information, you can then retarget them with Facebook ads or even Google ads if that's something you're interested in doing. So that way it shows up on the sidebar of their Gmail accounts. Like getting traffic to your website is a great way, even if people don't directly opt into that summit at that moment, letting them know that you exist and then being able to follow up with them, whether that's they do opt in and you can follow up with them via email, or you can do some of the retargeting and remarketing opportunities out there. Getting them to find you can sometimes be, you know, 80% of the battle. 
With the Ever Summit feature inside the Virtual Summit software, you can rerun your summit as if it were live ongoing forever with one click of a button. This now lets you continue to use your summit forever, bringing in qualified and engaged leads every month into your business. Get more information at virtualsummit.com. This is gold right here. So I want to, I want to, in the last minute or two, we have kind of pick this apart a little bit. So we would have summit, like the summit speakers write a guest post and that's going to go on to the blog that we attach to the summit or are they writing it for their own blog? I like the idea of doing it on your summit blog. So the summit speaker writes a guest blog. We put it onto the summit blog. There's links obviously that go from there to the summit and the speakers kind of recommend it in there. The speaker then is sharing that on their social or whatever, which is where we're having backlinks to it. We have pixelation or, you know, we have tracking added to that. So Google analytics, as well as Facebook pixels. So then we can retarget to the summit. If we're using the ever summit feature on the virtual summit software, then anytime they go over it to that summit, it looks like it's getting ready to start next week. Yes. And then they opt in. The only thing I want to just make a little technical tweak is um, they will promote it out to their social media, ideally, but that wouldn't actually be the backlink. Um, backlinks go from website to website, not from social to website. But you can tell your speakers that, you know, our, our summit website gets X amount of traffic and, and has a domain authority of Y. And we would love to give you a backlink to your website from our summit page if you write this guest post for us. So it benefits the speaker and then the speaker can promote it in that way. And maybe the speaker may give also a link to, you know, I was a member of this virtual summit, put it on their media page. They can link to that page and sort of um, share some of that cross-linking love along the way. I love that. That is gold right there. For those of you who stayed all the way to the end here, you just <laughs> got like some amazing insight. You're going to see that happening. I think now I want to reach out to all the summits I've been a part of and be like, do you guys need any guest posts? Need, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be asking all of our speakers to do that. This is great. This is such good information, Meg. Thanks so much. We're going to wrap this up now. I would love for you one to kind of leave us first with a parting piece of wisdom. And then two, Where's the best place for all of those listening in here to go check you out, hang out with you and get in touch with you? All right. So my parting wisdom, I'm going to give two because I want to give one to Summit hosts and one to Summit guests. Um, and it's very similar, which is, um, you know, Summit hosts asked your speakers for, for more. You know, and not, not like do more work for me, but let your speakers shine and let them show up for you. And you can ask them for recommendations of who can be in there. You can ask them for guest posts. You are promoting them just as much as they are promoting you. So if you want to reach out to them and say, hey, I was just thinking that, you know, you're really well connected. Do you know anyone else who would be a good fit for this summit? We're specifically looking for operations people. Then if they don't know, they're not going to be offended by you asking, but if they do know and they can expand your network and bring more depth to your summit, that benefits them too. So don't be afraid to ask. And I think for my summit speakers, offer. <laughs> don't be afraid to offer more. Don't be afraid to say, hey, you know, I was in another summit and they did this. And is that something that you would want me to do for you? Like, <laughs> hosts are really strapped for time and they have their it's like wrangling cats sometimes where they have a deadline and not a single speaker lands on the deadline right so the first thing you can do is is show up when you say you're going to show up and submit things on time but then offer to offer to write a little more throw in something extra to the giveaway and it will make them more likely to come back to you for future summits if you can can show up and and you know be in the chat box at the right time and maybe be in the chat box during other people's sessions because they're sitting there and they might be bored and you showing up can start to build those relationships with other speakers and with the hosts and just being an involved speaker and showing up can make a huge difference in uh, future summit invitations and being inv invited back for you know know, repeatable recurring events. So good. And then where can they find you hanging out at? Sure. Uh, I am at Megabolt Digital. My name is Meg Casebolt. So Megabolt is my superhero name. And uh, you can find me, probably the best place to find me is over on Instagram, Megabolt Digital, M-E-G-A-B-O-L-T-D-I-G-I-T-A-L. Amazing. Get a, little, a little jingle Amazing. there. <laughs> now that's going to be in my head 
all day long. <laughs> Thank you, Meg. No, seriously, this has been phenomenal. Totally appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming hanging out with us today. Loved being here with you, Mark. Thanks so much for the opportunity. And thank you, all you Summit hosts, for spending this time with Meg and I here. Uh, don't forget, your message matters, so go out and make an impact in the world. I'm Dr. Mark T. Wade, your host here on the Virtual Summit Software, or the Virtual Summit Podcast. And don't forget to check out all of these amazing goodies. Everything Meg talked about and more is over on the show notes at podcast.virtualsummits.com forward slash 101. We are in the triple digits. 101. Woohoo! Triple digit dance. And we're going to see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening. Now, don't forget to subscribe and leave a five star review on the Virtual Summit Podcast. Head over to the show notes to check out all the links and resources from this episode and be sure to grab your free trial of the Virtual Summit software. Now, I want to end this episode by saying to all the Summit hosts listening right now, I believe in you and you can do this. Summits are by far one of the most powerful ways to quickly grow your list, launch your platform, make more money, and most importantly, make an impact in the world, even if you're just getting started. So don't get caught up in analysis paralysis because the world needs to hear your message and there are people who are waiting for you to help them. So just get started because imperfect action is always better than no action. Thank you and see you on the next episode.